So I want to go back to the wizard, the position logic wizard, because specifically is what I'm going to use. It's pretty easy to do. So click on next. It, it makes you default the drive to, to position positioning for this wizard. So you see my speed reference is now positioning. I'm going to leave my uh, X on D cell time for half a second. I'm going to click on next. I want to change it to step logic and my encoder is correct. It's a 1024 PPR quadrature, so which means that I'm counting four times that per revolution. So I want to maintain a 4096 count per revolution of the motor. Okay. I'm going to turn my gain up to 16 because that's what I've been playing around with. It seems to seems to perform a little bit better, not quite as soft. I've had it quite a bit higher, but for purposes of this, with this, it's it's good enough. So now I'm going to um, say my first position, position step zero. I want to make one revolution, and I'm going to say give it two seconds, and let's do it at 50 hertz. Now it may not reach 50 hertz because my axial is a half a second. I'm going to make it an incremental, which means that it's going to increment from where it is, right? Because um, I'm not homing. I don't have an absolute home at this point. I haven't homed it. I'm just going to start from where I am. And it's going to go to my next step when my time expires. And I'm just going to make this to time expires. And then my next step is going to be step one. So now I'm going to go to step one. I'm going to click next on the wizard here. And let's say, let's do 10 revolutions here. And let's make this five seconds. Let's make this 50 hertz. Let's make it the same when time expires. And I do want to jump back to zero. So I'm going to keep redoing these things. Now notice all your selections here. Logic one, logic in two. These are, these are digital inputs. You can assign a terminal uh, block, logic in one, logic in two, and have all these conditions present. So there's a lot of flexibility in this wizard. And I need to make this an absolute, I mean, an incremental as well. So my wizard is set up, set up. So let me go to my drive and this is the last thing we're going to do there. And I'm going to have to adjust my camera so you can see what I'm, what I'm looking at. And I'm going to move, there's a, that screw terminal, that screw block. In fact, let me move it a little bit better. So you can see there's a little, actually a line on here that I'd like you to see. Everybody see that like that flat line? So I'm just going to hit uh, start keypad, and if I put everything back together right and didn't mess up my encoder like I did yesterday, it should start off and do one revolution in a two second time period. And when two seconds expires, it should do 10 revolutions. And it should, after five seconds expire, it'll just repeat step one and go just keep going back from one rev to 10 rev. So note that it doesn't walk. I mean, it may, it may dither a little bit, uh, and that's tuning, but it's not going to walk. It's always going to come back to its same, same spot. And you can keep, I, I believe you can keep doing the same one over and over again, and you can actually change the value through data links over Ethernet. So it's a, it's a, it's a pretty powerful little drive for simple applications if you need to do some rudimentary positioning. As you can see, my encoder tolerance was set at like, I think I had it set at 100. Let's go back to that parameter list under advanced program. My, find, my encoder tolerance is set at 100 counts. Now let's go back to advanced display and you can actually look at my encoder units traveled. You can see it increment and it should go from, now it should go to 424. Now it should go to 434. 